All right, all right. LDW MMA Seed is your boy, Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harrison Combat Sports Show Live. Okay, real quick, guys. I want to alert you guys that my logo was supposed to go on to Juliana Lima, but me, her, and Roger, we got our times mixed up, and we got the time frame mixed up. So I, I didn't even know when I was supposed to submit the logos and any of that stuff. So it, it's, it's partly my fault. But what we've agreed to do is uh, Juliana... She's actually going to, uh, you know, put it on her next fight. So, guys, the logo fund is still on. It's, it's partially on me, too, because of my work schedule. So, we're just going to take those funds. We're going to give it to Juliana, and she's going to put it on her next uniform. So, guys, definitely. But I want to go ahead and talk about this fight right now, okay? Juliana Liam versus Danielle Taylor. Um, I had made some, some really strong criticisms about Danielle Taylor, um, you know, how she was going to be successful in the future. And I said that Dynamite Danielle Taylor was going to need an inside game because, you know, I was saying that she's too short to actually fight on the outside. I've said this, you know, about her and uh, um, uh, her and um, Vivian Prairie. I've said that. They cannot fight on the outside being that they don't have the reach advantage. Um, this fight, you know, I felt like it was going to be definitely a make or break. Not a make or break, but just a statement to see where Danielle Taylor's training has come. Well, you got Julianne with Jutat Lima. And I interviewed her about a month or two ago. And uh, let me tell you, man, she's tough as they come. Uh, Julianne Lima, you know, has a strong... Her stand-up is very, very good. And and I knew that this was going to be... I, I was hoping to see a striking battle. No. Danielle Taylor what, didn't allow that. What, the first thing Danielle Taylor tried to do is she tried to go for a takedown. And Danielle Taylor probably figured that since Julianne Lima is not known as a grappling art... Uh, not known as a wrestler... That she was going to try to get an advantage, get the fight to the ground, and try to avoid damage. Because when you think about it, you got to fight a lot of times. And you're fighting a lot of times in one night. So the damage that these fighters are going to take, man, the damage can be massive. So I understand what Danielle was doing. It was a very good, it was a good game plan, too. Seeing as though Danielle Taylor didn't have the reach advantage. Juliana Lima did a very good job of keeping Danielle Taylor at bay with the clinches. And uh, guys, to any young fighters, man, Juliana Lima continued to keep an underhook clinch. And then she reverted from an underhook clinch to a Muay Thai clinch. And so she was actually making it very difficult for Danielle Taylor. Um, I like some of the work that Danielle Taylor did when she put Juliana Lima on the fence. And she did that for most of the fight. Danielle Taylor, you know, is very strong. And I don't know if Juliana, Juliana Lima thought that Danielle Taylor being so short could be so damn strong. But she kept Juliana on that fence, man. She kept on that fence, and Juliana was having a tough time getting off the fence. Danielle Taylor kept going for single leg, and, you know, she kept trying to shoot for the takedowns. The one thing that was going wrong with what Danielle was doing is that she didn't drive through the target. She would go for the takedown, but then, you know, she would just, like, try to just lift her up. And you don't want to, you know, you don't have to lift her up. She could have just put a leg, she could have reached for the single leg takedown and started driving her hips forward against the fence or away from the fence and then she could have got the takedown and what i mean by away from the fence is like you circle like you're on the fence 